okay so you refresh and then you will get events.txt and this will show you all the events being logged in and then with some data being rendered in json and this is what it comes in like customer session in it model load before core abstract and so on so if you want to get a certain events being triggered when you create a new customer then you will go la al malhi and then i will go with the email i have a gmail com and then password and then confirm password now if i create account then i will see different events all the events previously will be gone and these events will override whatever being triggered by the customer registration and then you can look for the customer for example and then you will have customer and then load and then load after load before customer account to quote this is core copy field sets you will also have controller action pre dispatch customer action load predispatch customer and all these about the customer and then all the events being triggered by certain method you will log them inside this file during loading the page or executing any method and this is how you get to know what things are being triggered or be what events being dispatched during executing certain methods and this is what happens when you create a new customer now if I want to add address then I will have like my number all zeros and then one two three Queens Street and the city will be Manchester and then postcode I'll just do BB1 one two one a e this is just a dummy postcode and now save address when I save the address you will see different so customer address load after load before and load after you can see these customer load and you can have certain events about the address addresses so this is what we're going to build we're going to build a listener or a plugin would listen to what events being dispatched during the time you execute the method and when you are in the web or you are in the command line or in the on, on the cron whether you are in the front end or in the back end so let's go ahead and build that module so to build the module we already create events logger so I will go into create a plugin I'll call it plugin and then I'll call it events logger uh, that's uh, just a directory and then I will create file so the class will be events logger and that's it now we will listen to before dispatch event and this will be listening to the manager event manager and we call it subject then let's go inside the manager when you dispatch you will have event name and then data the data will be optional so this is the dispatch and we will listen to before dispatch plugin so we say before dispatch that is the method we will use which is correlate to the dispatch and then we will have this subject and we will have event name and then we will have array data and they are optional now that's what we need to do for now and then what we need a couple of objects in order to make this happen first of all we need json serializer so json serializer and then json serializer and the second thing we need to do is the io file so it's a magento system we will look into so this is is a file adapter and then the next thing we need to do is the directly list to get the root directly the path to the to this root which is magenta site and this is it now now we need to initialize all these objects so we just initialize all and once we initialize them all we need a to build this now we need a way of normalizing the data because the data has objects and objects is very difficult to dump them into the file so we need to make them easy to uh, add them to the files to be writable so we will have a private function or private method we call it get data and then we pass it array data and then we will have a dispatch or dispatch data equals an empty array and then we loop through the data for each data as key value and then if is object value we will say dispatch data add key and then have colon and then get class value so that's for one the other thing is if is scala value then we will just say dispatch data add to it key colon and then value now if is array value then we will say dispatch data equals this get data value now we have these and then return dispatch data so what we are doing here so it's key not get and we just fix it now what we're doing here is the dispatched data will be returned from this because this could have some objects in it so 
so what we need to do is we create this empty array and then if it is object we say key and class name add it to the data if it is a scala then just the key and the value if it is array then we call a recursive get data on it and then we'll return whether this or this until it reaches the end of the data and then we'll return the final data and this is what needs to be logged besides the event name so we call we say event event equals event name and then also colon and then this get data data now this data will be normalized and then you don't have any objects in it now you have event and this one now every time you load or execute a function this will be triggered and this will be populated from the from the plugin here. now to do this we can write this file adapter write this the directory list get root it will get us the path the absolute path up to the magenta site and then we we, we need to get into var log and then events.txt and the data we will log is event and that's all to it this is all what we need to do so we go to the etc and then create ti.xml file to wire up the plugin we just created so to di and then type the type will be the manager here this manager and then will be plugin plugin will be event logger and then the type will be this plugin so we create this plugin and then we add it here and we just move the old slash here now we just need to flush cache cache flush if we refresh now we have array sorting event so array to string conversion and that's correct because we are having an array here and what i forgot is to use the json serializer serialize so that's why we used it we have it injected it here only to serialize this data and we refresh again now it's refreshed and it's done if we go to var log we have the events and then we only have one this is the last event in this batch and this is what we we get but we haven't got any events being dispatched before because every time i re refresh or trigger a method here so if i go to what's new then i will get a different event and this is because every time i refresh many plugins or many events are being triggered and every time it triggers this will write and overwrite and overwrite and overwrite so probably if 10 events being triggered this will write the first event and then the second event is being triggered dispatched this will write the second one but the second one will overwrite the the first one and the third dispatch event will override the second one and so on so it's only one entry you get here every time you listen to any events you only get one so in order to collect all of those and log them together is simple we can create private static array events and this will be into array for now now what we need to do here is every time you have this we'll say static events and then i will have events event name here as a array key this is because many events will be triggered at once and this will, will log duplicate events but we don't want duplicate events we only want them unique so in order to get them unique you pass in here the events name so it only to make it unique and then now event is not available anymore here so you will go here and say static events but static events here is an array and is not a string and this the file adapter right expect the second parameter to be a string so we just cut it and then just say implode php in the line which is a new line and then put it here so let's get these in new lines for readability and now you will get an array but you break it into new lines and this is will be a text now if i rush and go to the events you will get many events being displayed so, so i think this is a very good way to find out about what events being triggered in certain pages or certain functionalities or whatever function or a method or class being executed and then this will get this logged into here and you can have a very good visibility on what is being triggered what events you want to listen to and what objects are available in on the event object however there is a catch here this should be used only on development it should never make its own way to the production because this is very heavily right into a text file so to explain it first of all well, we have like 40 44 lines but first of all will write first line and the second time will write two lines the third time will write three times until the 
44 times or write everything so it will keep writing to this file until the end of life when the function is executed and ended and then it will log everyone or everything but before then it will log one by one and this is why you don't want this to happen on the production or you only want it on on development and this is how you can find about uh, events being dispatched and what objects are available in the observers i hope this is uh, useful and if you like the video please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time